Good day. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Douglas Harder, and in this topic we're going to look at abstract trees. So we're going to describe again the hierarchical ordering that we will use to that we will store in an abstract tree. We will look at the description of an abstract tree and then discuss implementations and application. And we're going to see that trees that store hierarchically ordered data are generally locally defined. So again, a hierarchical, any hierarchical ordering of a finite number of elements can be stored in a tree data structure. Now, suppose we have hierarchical ordering and you are storing this in a tree. What are some of the questions you may ask? What are some of the queries or operations you may want to do? Well, you may want to access the root node or you may want to access one specific object or one specific node within the container. So given that, given a reference to any object within the tree, we may actually want to access the parent of that object. We may want to find out the degree of the current object that we're looking at. We may want to get a reference to one of its child, or perhaps its first child. We may want to iterate through all of the children. We may want to attach, given a particular node, we may want to attach or add a new child, or perhaps even add an entire subtree. Finally, given a particular node within the tree, we may just wish to detach the entire subtree rooted at that particular node from the given, uh, given entire tree. So abstract trees do not restrict the number of children. So for example, uh, here we have a tree where nodes have 0, 1, 2, or 3 children. We can implement a general tree by using a node class where the class itself stores an element and then all of the children of that element are stored in a linked list. So here we go. So we have a template type, it's a simple tree, and it stores an element, just like your singly linked list class. There's a pointer to its parent, and we're going to store an array, or a, sorry, a singly linked list of pointers to the children. Rather than having a singly linked list of children, we'll have a singly linked list of pointers to children. And then we have a number of operations that satisfy the operations and queries that we described late previously. Now, let's say we have these nodes within a tree. 8 is the root, it has children 14, 16, and 19, and 16 has 23 and 27 as its children. How would this be stored? Well, every single node is stored independently in main memory. Here we have the node for the root. Here we have the node for 16. Now, inside the node we have a singly linked list instance and this singly linked list points or contains three nodes within it. The pointer in the first node stores the address of node 14. This address stores 16. The address stored here is the address of this particular node. Now node 14 has no children so its singly linked list is empty. It doesn't contain any children, and so it has a count of zero. 16, on the other hand, has two children, so its singly linked list has two nodes within it. The first node stores the address of node, the node store in 23. The second one stores the address of node 27. Similarly, node 27 stores a pointer to node 16, its parent. 23 and 27, as well as 19, have no children, so each of these three linked lists are empty. Now, much of the functionality of this simple tree structure is very similar to that of um, the singly linked list class which you implemented. So again, the constructor is going to allow us to pass in an element and 
a reference to a parent or a pointer to the parent. We'll store both of those. Now, of course, the default value for the pointer to the parent is zero. We may assume that if you don't pass in a reference to a, a pointer to a parent, we are at the root, we're creating a root node. If we want to retrieve an element, we can do so. And if we want to retrieve the parent node, we return the address stored, storing the parent. Now, do we want to, do we want to see if a node is a root node? Well, how do you do that? A node is a root node if it has no parent. If it has no parent, parent must return zero. If we want the degree of a node, well, we're storing the children inside of the singly linked list, so we'll just return the size of the singly linked list. If we want to see if a node is a leaf node, we will just check if the degree is zero. Again, rather than checking if children.size is equal to zero, the reason we check if degree is equal to zero is this allows some independence of the internal implementation. As long as degree works correctly, if we change the implementation, for example, store the children in an array, it doesn't matter as long as degree returns the correct value. Now, let's say we want to access the nth child. Well, first of all, if we're asking for the nth child and it doesn't exist, we're just going to return zero. So if n is less than zero or greater than or equal to the degree, we will simply return zero, indicating that that particular child does not exist within the tree. Otherwise, we will grab a pointer to the head of the linked list and then we will iterate n minus 1 times through that linked list, each time incrementing the pointer by 1. And then finally, when we've gotten to the nth element, then we will return what it's storing. And it's storing the address of the nth child. Again, here n is going from 0 to n minus 1. One. Inserting a new object is similar to inserting something into a linked list. If we want to insert a new object, we will simply push back, but what will we do? We will actually have to create a new simple tree object. New returns the address of this simple tree. It's storing that object. This is the parent. It's going to be the parent at least very soon and it will be pushed onto the back of the singly linked list class, or the singly linked list. Let's say we want to detach a node and all of its descendants from a particular tree. Well, if something is already a root node, we do nothing. So if a particular node is a root node, we just return. We're done. We've already, it's, there's nothing to detach. On the other hand, if there is a parent, we will tell the parent's linked list to erase that node that has a pointer to this object. And then we will set the pointer, or the parent, of the current node to be equal to zero. Essentially, we are turning this tree and all of its descendants into a tree rooted at that node. Notice that the linked list will deal with the fact that the degree of the parent has now gone down by one. Now, if we want to insert an entirely new tree, well, again, we will insert and we will pass a reference to a tree. Now, the tree that we're adding might actually already be a tree with or a subtree of some other tree. So what do we have to do? We first have to check. Is the tree that we're adding a root node? If it is not a root node, that means it's already some other child somewhere else. Well, you can't have two children, so the first thing we'll do then is simply detach the tree from its parent, which we described in the last slide. Once we've done that, we will then say, okay, this node is now the parent of the tree you're adding, and I will simply push it back 
that tree onto the singly linked list. Now, let's say we want to find the size of a tree. Well, this is going to be a recursive function. Now, if there are no children, the size is 1. On the other hand, if there are children, we will have to step through all of the children and add the size onto s. So here I will get the, a pointer to the head of the singly linked list and each time I'm stepping through it until I get to the end of the singly linked list I will retrieve the object, the nth child, and I will ask what its size is and add that onto s. At the end, once I've asked all the children what their sizes are, I will return that value of s. But what happens if one of those has further children? Well, this function is being called recursively, and so that child will determine its size by asking all of its children what their sizes are, and each of those will ask their children what their sizes are. And this will go on until we reach a leaf node at some point. Ultimately, we will add up all of the nodes within the tree. Now, how about the height? Well, we can determine the height recursively as well. If a tree has no children, its height is zero. So we will initialize the height to be equal to zero. However, if there is a child, what will the height be? Well, the height of a particular node will be the maximum height of any of its children plus one. So we'll start by initializing height to zero. We will step through all of the children in the singly linked list, and each time we will set h, the temporary height, to be the maximum of height, or one plus the height of that child. Once we've gone through all the children, we can return the height of the entire tree. Again, this is called recursively. So, if you ask for height, of a child, it will check all of its children, get the maximum of those heights, and add one to it as well, and so on and so forth. Now, we could, if we want, implement a tree that stores up the children in an array. Not that different from storing them in a linked list, However, now we can more quickly access the nth child. Rather than stepping through the single link list, we can immediately access that element. However, the other problem is, of course, changing the size of an array may be expensive. Now, hierarchical orders are almost universally defined locally. So, basically, you, given a new node or inserting a new node, you make a direct statement that this is a new child of this particular node. In fact, this is what you do when you're describing subclasses in either Java or C Sharp. You have a class, and that is your base class. In fact, it's not the base class. That implicitly extends the object class. If you explicitly state that a class extends another class, it becomes a child of that. So you are, you are stating that symmetric matrix is a subclass of the matrix class, which itself is a subclass of the class object. And of course, rather than saying parents and children, we say superclass and subclasses. Object class is always the root of the class structure in Java and C-sharp. Now, how about directories? Directories are also defined locally. You are in a particular directory and you make a new directory which immediately becomes a descendant of the current directory. If you want to refer to the parent, you use dot dot. So, cd dot dot says change the directory to the parent of the current node. Children are, of course, subdirectories. In Unix, 
there's a single root node slash. And even if you want to mount a new hard drive, it becomes a subdirectory of the dev directory, which itself is a subdirectory of the root directory. Now, Microsoft Windows, on the other hand, every single drive has its own name. So every single drive has a root directory. So now, instead of having just a single root, we actually have a root for every single drive on the computer. So what do you call a scenario where you have multiple trees? Well, it's a forest. So in this topic, we've described an abstract tree. An abstract tree is just a An abstract data type describing the storage of a hierarchical ordering. Given a hierarchical ordering, there are certain operations we may wish to perform. Access, a, access the root node. Given a reference to a node or a pointer to a node, we may want to know the parent. We want to access the children. We may want to attach or detach a tree to a particular node. Now, we look at an implementation of an abstract tree. Nodes store elements, and the children are stored as a linked list of pointers to those children. Of course, if we store them as children, as a linked list, accessing the nth node is rather slow. However, if we use an array, other issues occur with the maximum size of the array. Thank you very much and have a good day.